This is going to be your park test. We're going to review the park tools um, on this test. Um, as third graders, you will take two park tests. Both are math tests, so you'll have um, you'll have a little bit of time between each test. Um, you will still take the OAA uh, reading OAA on, on paper and pencil, but you'll take the park test online. So because you take the park test online, I wanted to review some of the tools of the park test. So here are some of the features. Um, if you look at the top. We have a left and a right arrow. This allows us to go back and forth between the test um, questions, and you can tab back and forth. If you look up here, you also have a review panel. This tells you what questions are answered, which ones you haven't seen. It also allows you to, let's return the questions, it also allows you to flag questions. And when you do a flag, it is a marked question. So you always need to answer every question on the test, but if you're not quite sure if you got the answer right or not and you want to go back, you need to click flag to flag the question so that you remember to go back and look at that question. The pointer is what we're using right now. It allows us to answer questions. Just click and point. This is a protractor. It measures angles and you can turn it to measure any angle that you want. This is a notepad. Um, you have a notepad, but you will also be given a piece of paper and pencils to work out any of your problems because there is no calculator for this test. So you're going to have to work out all your um, equations on a piece of paper to get an answer. Then you also have a ruler. You can move the ruler. You can shift it around. And then the last thing you have is called an answer eliminator. The answer eliminator is nice because if we read up here, it says Gina's bedroom floor is the shape of a rectangle. It is 10 feet long and 9 feet wide. What's the area of Gina's bedroom floor? So when we look at that, we know we have to multiply 9 times 10, which means we're not adding, so it can't be 19. It can't be 38, so we're eliminating answers. And it can't be 109. Now, it's got to be this one. If I click this, it doesn't select it. But So I have to unclick. So if I select it by accident and mark them all off, I have to unclick one of them, go up to the pointer, and then I can choose my answer. Um, the eliminator is a great feature, but please only use it if you're going to make sure you have selected an answer, okay? And the review panel will also show you that you answered it. So that's why you always have to look at the review panel at the end of the test. Don't look at it every question, okay? Then you have fill in the blank. So four, 7 divided by 7 is 1. Um, I'm going to keep going. You also fill in the blank here. I want to take point note um, that these are bullet points, and bullet points list things. Later on in this test, you're going to see that it lists questions sometimes. Um, so sometimes when it's like part A, it will list three bullet points. So there's three answers to part A. Then we also have um, bolded words. Bolded words, like the, the number three here, uh, the word three here, um, those indicate that it's a special instruction. So you actually need to choose three boxes. On this one. Not just one, but three. Make sure you're paying close attention to these bolded words because they're going to help you get through the whole test. Then we are plotting points. So if we plot this point, it's going to turn blue. You'll get a blue box. Um, this is an equation editor over here. It allows you to write out equations um, so that you can answer them. Let's look at this problem. It says Cindy's finding the quotient for 20 not 27 divided by 9. She says the answer is 18 because addition is opposite of division and 9 plus 18 equals 27. So part A says identify the incorrect reasoning in Cindy's statement. Enter your explanation in in the space provided. So it wants us to explain in this space. So we click in here. Now, when it says to explain, you almost always have to use words. So it should be Cindy is wrong because addition oops, is not opposite of division. Now, do I need to do anything else? Not really. I don't need to use my equation editor over here. I've already answered the question. Okay. Now, while you're writing this question, I'd also like you to take note of the left arrow, which means undo. So it undoes the last thing I did. And then the right arrow, which means redo. So it adds back what I took out. And then the button that I really don't ever want you to hit is called the trash can. And when you hit the trash can, it erases your whole answer. 
There's never going to be a time where you're going to mess up anything so bad that you need to erase your whole answer. You can erase parts of it, but you never have to erase the whole thing. Now down here it says, show or explain how Cindy can correct her reasoning. Find the quotient for 27 is divided by 9. So we're going to click in this box. We're going to write 27. Use the division. 9 equals, now I want you to understand that this did not solve the problem. You still have to solve the problem. 3. Now, the opposite of that would be 3 times nine, oops, 9 equals 27. So that will be the opposite. In this um, way, we've explained it with numbers, and so now we have to explain it with words. Enter your answer and your work or explanation in the space provided. So it asks us to show our work over here. Now we can also write a sentence to explain our reasoning, which would also be a good thing to do um, because it lets the test reviewers understand what you were doing. Let's keep going. Um, here's another equation editor. It says to give the fraction up here. So when we give a fraction, we find all the parts. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is broken into six parts. This is the fraction writer. We're going to click on it. We always put the denominator on the bottom. So we click on the bottom, we hit 6, and then the numerator goes on top. And of that, the P is on the number 5. It's on the fifth section. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So our fraction here is 5, 6. If you notice, there are bullet points, so we have to answer more than one question. It says, what does the denominator of your fraction represent? So you're going to have to put the denominator, denominator is how many parts the whole is broken into. Don't worry too much about how I'm answering this question, but make sure that you take note on how to use the tools that I'm using, okay? Now, let's see, let's go keep going. Once again, you have to write an equation over here. This is a mixed fraction, which you have not gotten to yet. Um, this is pretty interesting, parentheses. Parentheses allows you to do actions like this, three plus Four, click out of the parentheses, times 2. So it allows you to write out an equation, um, and then the answer for this would be 14. Okay? And it doesn't match the question, it's just me giving you an example of how to use that tool. Okay, this is asking you to do an array, and on an array you're going to click on the boxes. You need to click every single box that you want to cover up it only clicks one box at a time. So it might make you make a huge array. You need to click every box. Also, make sure when you are reading these questions, you are scrolling down to the end of every page and looking at the answers, okay? Because if you didn't answer one on there, you're gonna get it wrong. Click in the box, to enter your answer here. Oh, these are drop-down boxes. The drop-down boxes, you click the arrows, and you can choose answers. So this one wants us to do the opposite, so 48 divided by 6. So the opposite is 6 times what equals 48? Well, it would be 6 times 8 equals 48, but there's no choice. So in this case, we're going to use the question mark. Once again, keep scrolling. You can use the equation eliminator, answer eliminator, sorry, to get um, to eliminate answers. This one you would choose an answer, so you click on it again, and then keep scrolling down to the end until you get to the very, very end. See, sometimes you have to scroll a lot to get to the end of the questions. Scroll again. Now remember, this is just a practice test, so I'm not really answering the questions, I'm just showing you things. Scroll to the end again. Finally, when you get to the end, you're going to hit review answers. It's going to give you the review test. If you've flagged anything or not answered it, you're going to go back and look at it. Finish the problem, <clears throat> hit the review screen, and keep going down and answering any questions you didn't answer. Please do not log out until you've answered every single question. Once you've answered, answered every single question, you can then hit end selection, submit final answers, yes submit, and then you're all done, okay? You'll have fun with this test, and I know you'll do a great job.